Hi everyone, Ian here. So it finally happened. I bought an M1 Pro. If you saw my last video, I uh, purchased it on rather a crazy deal, a couple of dinks in it and a couple of hundred pounds off. Um, but even so, um, that means that I'm in a position where I need to be setting up this M1 Pro to be able to be used. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be doing today. We're going to be taking you through the motions of what it's to get a development environment set up and um, hopefully uh, it helps you out. So yeah, this is based on a post that I've done in the past, uh, which was when I set up my Mac Mini for the first time, the M1 Mac Mini. Um, I'll link to that down below in the uh, description so that you can find that and uh, follow through if you find that more helpful. So yeah, the first thing I like to do, um, I am not a fan of natural scroll on the Apple Mac ecosystem. I think it's confusing and... I don't understand why uh, it changed everything. Anyway, I still use uh, standard scroll. So I go straight into uh, the settings and jump over to mouse and set the scroll direction back to uh, normal. And then uh, within dock settings, if you jump back into the dock there, I like to hide this menu bar so you can see that this is pretty busy. And in fact, actually one thing that I like to do is remove most of this stuff. So let's just take it all off because I don't see, during development, I'm not gonna have any use for most of this. Um, most of the things that I try to access, um, that I will access, in fact, I'm gonna jump the terminal straight over into there because I've already used it and I'm gonna be wanting to have it there. Um, I generally use the uh, spotlight to be able to search for stuff. So I will, just anything is very good at um, finding what I need. And so I'm gonna remove system preferences from there as well. And then immediately uh, need to use it. Um, so yeah, I like to hide the uh, dock. So I'm gonna automatically hide and show the dock. And there's also um, recent applications in this. So you can, in the system preferences, so I'm gonna remove the show recent applications in the dock there. Uh, and then that's gone and just got a nice clean menu bar that pops in and disappears. Um, one other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to use stacks. These allow you to compress um, recordings, pictures, so that they don't all appear on... Uh, you can see I've got a recording here. If I was to make another recording, it would just pop onto the same uh, desktop. So I'm going to use stacks uh, so that all pictures and screenshots and things um, are stacked and so I can access them really easily there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is set up some Finder preferences. So if you go to the preferences for Finder, Finder, Finder preferences. Uh, in the sidebar, I like to show my home folder. So let's just pop that in there. Um, and I'll also drag it to the top. So it's the top thing in my sidebar there. There isn't, as far as I'm aware, still any way of um, snap to Windows on uh, Mac OS, which is a bit frustrating. So we're gonna use something called Rectangle. So I've been using this, which has worked quite well. So now, when I, you can see there, we get this nice kind of way of dividing up the screen quickly. Um, so that's a nice application to have right off the bat. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is install some terminal applications. So I'm going to install the Xcode tools and uh, that requires the command line developer tools to be installed. Uh, this is useful um, for a number of different applications um, in development. So let's get that installed. Um, previously, it was when we only had Python 2 on some of the older versions of Mac, that seems a long time for it to download. Um, 
Okay, that seems like it's taking forever. So uh, I may well need to move my router. If this works this time. Carrot stick on the go. Five minutes, that is a little bit better. And while that's going on, the next thing I want to get on the go is brew. So Homebrew is a package manager for Mac OS and it basically makes it a lot simpler to install stuff on Mac OS as a developer. There's a lot of common tools on there and it sets up all the dependencies that you're gonna need and it does a sensible job of installing stuff. The thing I was gonna say here is that so you can see that we now have stacked movies where my screen recordings record. So you can see that what happens when you use stacks they kind of get grouped together into a single stack and then you can expand them. If I wasn't to use stacks, they will just appear on desktop, which is kind of grubby if you're using multiple of them. We're just coming up to uh, the developer tools being installed. Um, something I wanted to point out is that uh, by the looks of things on Monterey here, we don't have Python. And I think it comes in as a part of the developer tools. So we don't have Python or Python 3. And in fact, you can see if you go for Python 3, there's no developer tools. Um, not long now. Look at that, 57 seconds. I'll speak past this. Okay, we're done. Cool. So let's see. Do we have Python 3 now? Oh, there we go. Python 3.8.9 comes down as part of developer tools. That's cool to know. Um... Next, we want homebrew. Um, let's pull that open again. So we have this just command to run. I'm just going to paste this straight in there. And this, hope you should inspect this. I'm going to take it on good faith that they are not trying to steal anything. Okay, do all that stuff. One thing I might do at the same time is uh, change my terminal so that we have it. In fact, I don't get any. Oh, there we go, we can see what we want. So I think pro is the one that I usually use, the pro profile, so let's do that. Let's see if I open a new terminal. Okay, that is not what I was expecting. Okay, I want it to be that. Okay, well it's set to that. I wonder if it just needs the initial one to be closed and open. So yeah, Brew is really helpful for installing all your developer trinkets. Um, if you want to install a particular library or a package, uh, it just makes it dead simple as you would find on, because uh, Mac OS doesn't have its own package manager, which is one of the kind of downfalls of uh, the downsides of using Mac OS in the first place. We have to install something to be able to do that for us. And luckily somebody's already built uh, homebrew and you can see how we can install each of these. You just got use the brew command and call install with it. So there's probably gonna be some uh, stuff afterwards that I need to do. It generally spits out a command at the end that you'll need to paste into your env, your shell environment. Okay, so we have run these two commands in your terminal and add, pro add it to your path. So um, Mac OS is now based on Zush, ZSH. Uh, where's the other one? There we go. So you should find, if we close the terminal, and then try and open it again. Cool, we've got it styled nicely now. So there you go, you can see we've got brew commands installed as well. So we're getting somewhere here. So, the next thing I want to do is install something called Oh My Zush or ZSH. 
by ZSH. Thank you very much. So we can just call this command. Again, you should probably check these if you are, have any reservations and get, just check it does what it says. Um, this installs a load of stuff into, there we go, it's done it already. Um, it basically styles it really nicely. There's a load of themes that you can use. So it kind of supercharges your terminal really. Um, you can see here, I can navigate around. Um, and it gives you a load of Git um, shortcuts as well, which is rather nice. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, set up our SSH keys. So these are the things that allow us to authenticate with um, other servers. Um, and source control places like GitHub. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, I'm not sure if we have the SSH. I'm assuming we do. SSH key gen. And we're going to be using ED25519. Okay, so let's set up. We also need to set up the sh config. So we will just touch that file. And in that, we need to paste um, this little bit of code, and you can find that on my um, website. So this just adds the file that we've just created into um, sh, and then we also need to do sh add that's k tilde, and then the, the sh key. So this is our private key that we've created. Okay, so it's actually come back with saying that we should not use the dash K. So let's try what it's telling us instead. So let's try dash dash apple use keychain. So yeah, the previous one is the dash K is deprecated. We should use this instead. So it's not complaining that time, which is good. Cool. Um, and then the next thing to do would be to paste this into um, GitHub. So you can do that by copying it, pb copy. So that gives us your public key. You've got to paste it, copy it into thing, and then you go into your GitHub settings. So basically you would paste that into your settings on GitHub in your SSH keys, and then you've got this machine will be able to authenticate with anything on GitHub, which is very handy. Um, we also want to set up GPG so we can sign our commits. So if we do brew install GPG, So this is the reason why install brew because you can see all these dependencies coming down. This just made it a lot simpler by having that available. And in fact, actually, I wonder if this is brew's. I think this might be de brew's default behavior where it updates everything. Um, you can, as in it updates every package it knows that is outdated before it tries to install new things. Um, you can actually change that behavior. Uh, but I've not done it here, so we just have to sit and wait while it updates everything. Okay, finally, we've actually got to the defenses for GPG. 
Okay, sorted. So in order to actually generate the key, we need to do a full generate key. Yeah. So in fact, actually, you can copy all of this. Oh, there we go. That's the reason why we are getting a difference. Cool. Okay. So now we're at RSA 4096, which is what we want. Again, we list the secret keys. Uh, and in this, it will give us the key that we want to use, which I believe is this one for me. Doopy dooby doo. So, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and regenerate that so it's not. Um, the same because <laughs> obviously I don't want my GPG keys leaked uh, the same with my SSH keys as well but then you'd paste that into github as well um, or in fact actually you need to export it first so let's do that as well GPG armor export and then we've got a GPG key that we can copy and paste so also we will need to use that same key to so git so they do that with this command so git config dash dash global user dot signing key and then we would also paste in that same key id into it so for example like that and additionally, you will also need to get this into your Z profile. So to do that, so you would do the following. Like that. Now I'm not going to do that because I'm going to regenerate my key, but you would enter that and get it in your Z profile and then your GPG key is available for using Git. Um, another tool that we are always going to need is Docker. I say always going to need, depending on what you're doing, I use all the time, so Docker. Let's just install that. Okay, there we go. Mac with Apple chip. For some reason I had to go to visit the direct link, it would not let me in. Okay, so it's just preventing downloads in Safari. So yeah, while that's working, I will also install PyEnv. So we can do that. So PyEnv is a tool that allows you to use different uh, Python environments, Python versions rather. Um, so if you just do root install PyEnv. So we have Python, I think 3.89 was it? If you want to use other versions, we can use PyEnv to do that. 3.10.6, I think, is a stable release, according to this. Okay. So if you do Python install 3.10.6. Oh, sorry. PyEnv, not Python. So yeah, we have got Docker installed now. So I can bring that up by just calling Docker through Spotlight. This animation runs a lot faster than it did on my 2015. So yeah, it's a good measure of uh, how much faster and much more expensive Mac is. There we go, cool. So let's skip the tutorial and just get going. Um, let's minimize that for now. So we've installed Python 3.10.6. What I'm going to do is make 3.10.6 the default. Um, whoops. 
we are on pi env, not python. Cool. And if I look at pi env versions, I believe that will. There we go. Cool. So now I've got the pi env set up with the latest version of python. Um, we're going to now install poetry, which is a package manager for Python, uh, which I am, I've done a few tutorials on in the past. We're just going to go through the default installation method there. Um, do we have installation? Okay, cool. So just run that. Poetry installation failed. Brilliant. That's interesting. That is coming up there. So if I open terminal, so if, hmm, that's interesting. It's not to reverted the color scheme, even though we're saying we're using Pro. But actually, let's make that the default. Let's see if that does it. Quit terminal. Try again. Okay. So it looks like my battery is just given up. So I'm going to be carrying on doing this on just the uh, desktop. So hopefully you can cope with that. So it doesn't look like we're getting the actual Python version. So if you do Python, it doesn't actually have it. If we do Python 3, it comes back with the wrong version. Okay, so for ZSH, we've got some instructions that we can do there. That's what we've done. Paste them in, use them. Okay, so now we got 3106. Go back to Python Poetry and try and run that command again. Okay, that looks a bit more promising. So we just add that to our shell configuration file. So let's go into other SH or C file, control V. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay. And then hopefully, if I open up another tab, we should have poetry there already. Yes, call. Cool. That's what we want. So the next thing I need is NVM, which is a node version manager. So node, you'll be probably be familiar with. Um, I want to install the version manager for node. So that we've got something similar to PyEnv, but for node versions. And so let's just copy that and let's clear this and go ahead and try and install it. Okay, so it should be able to. In fact, actually, we just got it down here, haven't we? Cool. So we should be able to just do mvm install node at this point. Which is version 18. Wow. Okay. So some of the things that we haven't done yet is uh, install Google Chrome, which is a developer's favorite for web development. So let's go ahead and do that because we're currently dealing with using Safari. Um, another thing that we want to install is Visual Studio Code. Uh, 
In fact, let's just download. And the thing to point out on all of these is actually that uh, this has moved on quite some way from when I originally did um, this tutorial um, a year or so ago when I first had my um, M1 Mac Mini because this has uh, native builds for each of for Apple Silicon. So we have all these um, applications able to be installed. We've got Docker able to be installed and used. Um, we've got the application as we've got VS Code and Google Chrome versions. Whereas previously we would have had to have like insider versions of builds and things like that. Another application that I want is PyCharm which is a nice IDE for Python from JetBrains. And what has finished in here, Google Chrome, let's install that then. In fact, let's eject this, we don't need that. In fact, actually, was that the one that I wanted? That was the professional, I didn't want that. Let's download the community one for now. So now we've got Chrome. Put that in the dock. That's my preferred browser. Let's put it in here. I prefer viewing these as a list, so let's change that to a list. Google Chrome, we do not have Visual Studio Code there. Let's pull that across and run it. That's okay. And there we go. Now, I think there's probably like a whole entire tutorial I can go through on setting up. Um, all your Visual Studio Code plugins. Um, I will probably do that in another episode, another a video, um, but yeah. So we've got PyCharm as well. Let's put Visual Studio Code in the dock. Let's put it there. Remove that from the top so we no longer have Safari. We've literally got this very clean. Let's install PyCharm. Cool. And then okay, so. We have the most useful applications that we have in the taskbar that we're going to use probably all the time. I'm not going to go into PyCharm and set that up now. And similarly with Visual Studio Code, I am not going to set that up now. I will probably go that. If you are interested in a tutorial on that, then give me a shout um, in the comments. Um, And in fact, actually, one thing to do that's very important is to use DuckDuckGo rather than Google. So let's add this to Chrome. So this will allow you to use DuckDuckGo as a search engine and default your browser so it's using it. Um, and it will also stop a bunch of tracking that you don't want going on in your browser, which is very handy. So sat there. And then we have got DuckDuckGo as our search engine, which is rather nice. So I typically use this by default. Um, oh, keep it, thank you. 
and there I am, Ian Wooten. Oh, well, there I am as well on IMDb. Um, so yeah, that's it. We've uh, set up our new M1 Pro for development and got a fully fledged Python and JavaScript environment set up with all the applications that we need, IDEs, Visual Studio Code, etc. Um, I hope you found that useful if you are setting up your own machine in a similar position. Um, and uh, yeah, if you did enjoy it, then consider subscribing to the channel and give it a like. And I will see you soon in a future video. Okay, bye for now. Bye.